We're going to watch something that if you've watched the, uh, the live letter today, uh, you might find it a bit repetitive, but I haven't seen it. Uh, this is the video from Mayoni, and Mayoni has made a, a summary of uh, the live letter uh, that, was, uh, that was live earlier today. So I'd like to watch it. And if you're not subscribed to Mayoni, please make sure to do so. Mayoni is a fantastic content creator who does these summaries uh, very, very well and is on top of things uh, very, very quickly. So yeah, let's uh, let's watch the video. If you're excited about Final Fantasy XIV, this is, I guess this is a great video for you. If not, this might be an opportunity for you to get into, into the game. Why not? Hello, Mioni here, and welcome to my summary of Letter from a Producer Live, Part 80, that aired today, the 13th of April, 2024. In this video, we are actually using the unofficial subreddit Discord for Final Fantasy XIV. Of course, that Discord link will be provided in the description. Okay. Go and support the lovely team over there. Their translations allow for videos like this on YouTube from many content creators, myself included, to be possible in the first place. Let's talk about the live letter then and the 14-hour broadcast at the start. The festivities begin for this 14-hour broadcast with Yoshi P joined um, by none other than Zodalin, which is obviously Fox Clon. That's the... See, what happened is I came back today from my kid's birthday party. I went on to Twitter and this is the face. This is the first thing that popped up on my on my Twitter. And there were like 10 uh, different images, all of them containing this face. And I knew exactly what this was about. I think that this particular cosplay has surpassed pretty much all of the previous cosplays that, that he's ever done. This is fantastic. <laughs> Super spoilery for anyone who hasn't uh, who hasn't done Endwalker, but you know. In his amazing cosplay here, Yoshi P finds a green blanket to become invisible on their new set here with the green, <laughs> green background that they That's used awesome. to show scenes from the game behind them to liven things up a bit. As you can tell, this is a time of celebration for the Square Enix team as they're just about to release Dawn Trail, <laughs> and it's nice to see the staff having some fun. Right. So there was a 10-hour tabletop RPG stream as well. <gasps> as Look at that stand! I have the exact same stand. It is the cheapest stand that you can get online for your phone, for your mic, for anything. It costs like almost zero money, but it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> From stream exposed. That to be looking at that features the upcoming t uh, tabletop RPG that's releasing in May that you can purchase. Uh, that looks awesome. I can't wait to play it myself. We'll no, it's very it good. <laughs> So, letter from a producer live number 80 starts with the unveiling of the benchmark trailer. This is what you will- Shut up. I endorse. I endorse that stand. That stand can like, if you're vlogging, it can like wrap around uh, like tree branches and such. You can like wrap it around your arms like this. Like this, th that stand is actually incredible. Look at it. Like it's so firm. Like this is, this is no this is not an ad by any means, but I, I highly endorse the the Final Fantasy XIV team for, for using it. Look, it's good. It doesn't fall off or anything. <laughs> Except that it breaks easily, but it's just good. I promise you. See if you download the benchmark yourself to test the game's performance on your own PC. No oh god. Featuring sneak peeks at many new job abilities, the zones, sneak peeks at some of the music. It's frankly brilliant and everything that I wanted. Definitely go and click in the description of this video and go and watch the link to the trailer itself. The video is available on the official Final Fantasy XIV YouTube channel, but you can of course download the benchmark yourself if you're a PC player on the Sunday, in fact, uh, on the 14th. Oh, April nice. 14th, uh, at 12 a.m. Pacific time, I believe they said. So that's pretty hype. You'll be able to go and look at that yourself. And I'm sure many people will be breaking down scene by scene to see what the new job abilities look like. 
The start of the live letter begins with a review and a little recap of Dawn Trail, obviously talking about the fact that early access will begin on Friday the 28th of June. Like I said, unfortunately I won't be able to play early access because I'm going to TwitchCon and I think that a lot of Final Fantasy XIV creators are going to be in the same boat. So the earliest that I'll be able to play Dawn Trail is July the 3rd and that would mean coming home uh, super tired on the second in the evening and just uh, just starting up the stream on the third pretty much straight away but i guess that'll give you some uh, some time to go through the first uh, i guess few quests or chapters or whatever it is uh, so that um, you can join us and the official launch for dawn trail itself is on the second of july the following tuesday they say if you pre-order the game, you can get the, the uh, wind-up Zidane minion and the Azamer's earrings, which provide an EXP boost up to level 90 for your combat classes and jobs in the game. Definitely pre-order the game if you can. There are different versions of the expansion you can buy, all dependent on... Isn't it the same? Isn't the, the price for the pre-order the same as the, um, as, the, as the standard edition? It just happens like earlier? what platform you play which they show this useful chart that shows you what you get with each version the collector's edition physical box contains a viper figurine a cloth map the unending journey journal which is blank so you can write in your own journal entries an adventurer's pen case and a special art box with that beautiful amano artwork the collector's edition digital items include the upcoming arc mount the wind up garnet's minion and the chocobo bro is garnet also from final fantasy 9 like does this mean i have to play 9 before i play <laughs> dawn trail glamour weapon for the upcoming pictomancer job also releasing with dawn trail very excited to see what pictomancer looks like and that looks like a cool looking weapon and now for the main content then the reason you tuned in the first half of the stream focuses a lot on in-game footage how is that a spoiler alert they said that this was gonna be from the, they said that there would be connections to final fantasy 9 and i know about the the other minion dude Dark Demon, welcome back. What's up? How are you doing today? No, I'm just I'm just catching up with the letter from the producer as I, I didn't get to see it th this morning. I'm, I'm so excited for those. How are you? Complete with technical terms about the graphical updates. There'll be side-by-side -side comparisons with 6.58 being used as one of the examples and also 7.0 on the other screen as Yoshi P and Foxclan are in the game at the same time on Yoshi P's account on different versions so for these side-by-side -side live comparisons with foxclon playing this is the elpis zone they use this as an example okay. of the foliage and texture differences between the two versions amongst many other texture changes you can see in here the grass is very much front and center they say elpis is an area where they've put a lot of effort into it yoshi p comments how the grass looks so much more detailed and Okay, so basically they changed the way this kind of looks. Uh, obviously, in the current Elpis, like when you zoom in, it just looks super pixely. But this, uh, th like the other, I guess the other picture, it like, how do I describe this? It also looks pix pixely, but like futuristic. It's like a, it's almost like a, like a hologram feeling if your if your camera is actually zooming through the grass am i wrong doing good how's the new schedule for streaming feel i honestly feel amazing this is working out so much better for me and i think that a lot of people are much happier with me not streaming at four in the morning american time <laughs> as well yeah i i like this it's much more easy like going how do you say easy on the eyes or whatever looks so good the hair of his character as well Seeing it like this is incredibly obvious to me to see what differences the graphical update can bring to just anywhere in right. the game. Right, look at this. Bear in mind all of these foliage changes apply retroactively to anywhere. Do they all been. play Lalafels? An open area or a dungeon instance. It's going to be quite interesting, actually. So when walking, you'll see how through this foliage, the grass is actually moving around the character in the 7.0 version. This is a new piece of tech that they're using compared to the obviously yeah there's like a little bit of like an after wind <laughs> going on 
when uh, when the character moves as well. That's dope. Oh yeah, and I'm definitely getting much more rest. This is perfect. At least I get to sleep at night. <laughs> on the left, they're unmoving old foliage, which is just yeah. This is nice this day, is so it? good. I'm gonna overuse that statement. Next, they show mounting and flying. So mounts have had a complete animation overhaul depending on what mount oh. it is. The mounts actually now tilt a little compared to the original if that is enabled. That's so nice! Mount will have this enabled, but in the case of this griffin mount, as you can see, yeah, the birds should be uh, able on the to. Left side, it's more sort of jagged, like 90 degree turns as you move. But on the right side in 7.0 onwards, you'll see the griffin is actually tilting and floating around because it's got its so wings nice. and that's how it would look much more fluid. Very cool stuff. So yeah, just to reiterate, they didn't change the values for mounts that would look weird if they were tilted. So don't expect this to be forced onto every mount, but they want you to go into the game and see for yourself which ones have changed. Again, yeah, I mean, if you want to play, if you want to play fourteen, I guess since it is subscription based, it is a good idea to you know be home enough so that you don't feel like your subscription is uh, is wasted. But who knows? Maybe come Dawn Trail, you, I don't know, your circumstances change a little bit and, uh, you know, you get to experience this firsthand. Like, I'm, I'm personally loving how this looks. And I have not played, let's say, Guild Wars 2, per se, but I've seen enough from it that I think that they took a lot of inspiration uh, from how the mounts behave in Guild Wars 2, because from what I, I've seen and from what I understand, Guild Wars 2 is one of the best games when it comes to mount collecting. And it is actually just baffling to me that I've never played it, even though I, I do like collecting. But I'm afraid that if I start playing Guild Wars 2, that I'll just go into mount collecting and will never play any other games ever, ever again. Uh, but yeah, this is this is a huge upgrade, both graphical and technical. And the the foliage in this is just it's incredible, isn't it? The backdrop it looks a lot higher uh, res as well for a content creator. I'm looking at this and going, wow, the bit rate's handling this really well comparatively to the footage on the left. That's the thing with streaming or recording Final Fantasy mm -hmm. 14. It's very hard to sort of get foliage in the scene without it looking blurry and horrible. That's true. <laughs> so you can see that there's quite a lot of features that we'll talk about later in this video that have added to that. Yoshi P wants to show us a comparison of ground textures, zoom in if you will, of the floor. These are in Tail Feather, a zone in Heavensward if you remember it. As you can see the textures are just unbelievably so much it's more so detailed. sharp Yoshi look at P that says the further you zoom in the more it makes you want to stop on fox clone side indicating obviously the 6.58 version in comparison right you also get a really good look at the hair on the top of yoshi p's character here my goodness that looks incredible it's so good every strand the e the right side i can't believe we're now as you can see i can't believe we're right now playing like this like the 6.5 oh oh eight <laughs> not oh it actually just makes me not want to log into the game <laughs> until <laughs> until Dawn Trail. He says the shaders on the ETH writer are also improved, end quote, as they G pose this uh, shot side by side here with the G pose function. It's hard to believe looking at this on the, the right that the game actually looks currently like the left side. Right? Today. As someone watching this stream, this is definitely going to be something many of us love but immediately forget how it used to be. Kind of how. how People have forgotten what the PS3 graphics look like or 1.0 graphics. Was it bad? It looks so good, doesn't it? Now we'll look at water and wetness of clothing in particular. <gasps> so here you can see in Shit! the side by side of the Pantheon gear from the Myths of a Realm Alliance raid on Yoshi. But when have we ever been in a situation that our clothing in Final Fantasy XIV was displayed wet? Is this something that even happens? Because I don't think it does currently in the game. I I don't I don't think it does because I remember taking like G pose shots and whatnot in the water, like when I was doing my island sanctuary and doing like G pose there. I I don't think there's ever been any difference. This is like completely new, isn't it? It's like playing Skyrim with graphics mods and then trying to go back to play without a cat. Be that, oh my god. GP's character. 
you can see the eyes and other facial changes on his character much more uh, obviously up close and personal it's beautiful here. there are also showing the wetness on the glamour here in g pose using the show wetness function side by side showing the shine compared to the original this applies to obviously the face as well as the clothes so it looks a lot more wet and shiny full texture updates yoshi p says the character looks more lively as a result of this so i can i just be honest with you like i'm not trying to be weird about this or anything but like i i don't like how lalafo models look in in this gear like their whole like i i don't know like with this particular graphics update like it just looks not like something that i would want to see okay i i i don't have like proper words to describe i can't like put my finger on it when i look at it it's it's like i know that lalafil are not children but it is very difficult to it is very difficult to not see them in this like childlike body or whatever and there is just something about this particular type of clothing and lalafil in it that just unnerves me okay i'm so sorry like if you play a lalafil you probably hate me right now but there is just something that irks me something that i would that just makes me want to see a different model here on this seat and instead of a lalafil i don't know i'm, I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> i have to agree honestly it really does it looks <laughs> just night and day what else can you say rain and weather then so a good example of weather effects they go to <sighs> thank god she dungeon. turned around <laughs> that looks incredible the texture changes here are very noticeable that looks amazing. spider webs that actually look like silky spider web sort of texture bark on trees that don't look as blurry this is incredible to me the wet stone here also reflecting all of that environment this is not even a new dungeon and this is pretty massive it's like a right. natural glow up of a pretty old it's instance so of the game remember when this came out uh, imagine what new dungeons will look like then with all of the stuff being built from the ground up with the new textures holy moly i can't wait Yoshi P says we improved and changed the textures for every field from every expansion. So when you're done with your new adventures, please take some time to go back. We didn't. F yeah, the this is the thing. I think that the biggest issue with this entire graphics overhaul is that people are not going to appreciate it enough. They're going to appreciate it in the new zones and they're going to be like, well, we waited two years for Dawn Trail. Of course, we want it to look good. And then they're going to go through Dawn Trail. They're going to finish with their MSQ and then they're going to go and AFK in Limsa. And the only time that it actually rains, they're going to see it in Limsa and they're going to be like, oh, OK, the rain looks good, but there is not a lot of content because these people are just not going to like go back and like replay the content and realize that gra I'm not saying that graphics update is content, but it is something that people have spent time on to improve the experience of both the new players who are going to go through these zones and anyone who wants to experience anything from the past zones. But some people just want to play the modern new content. Like some people just want new things, even if they only started playing the game, I don't know, when I did, maybe in Shadowbringers or, or in Endwalker or whatever, they're just not like willing to do something that's like not hot anymore like how many how many people do you know who started playing in i want to say in shadowbringers who have done the entire quest line for the like the firmament or who have done the scholasticate quest line or who have done um i don't know like i'm just i'm just i guess saying these from top of my head like the moogle post uh like the post moogle quest line or the Mm, anything like you know older quests some something like that yeah people will do leveling and msq and that's pretty much where they will be able to see these things but not everywhere jnx welcome back how are you doing what's up people who level more than one job will see the older dungeons that got updated yeah but that's like that's like the dungeon part but like what about the rest of the game what about the open world it's like there's still going to be people who are, com who are who are going to complain that there's no new content after they finish msq and who are not going to see what they've done with the old content yeah like job quests for example yeah 
I'm looking forward to those because I have not finished all of my job quests, which is embarrassing because I have most of them leveled, but I need to go back and actually unlock some of those skills and finish some of these stories. Finish every gear piece yet, but we'll keep working on those. Gear will also reflect the environment better. If the skies were blue here, he says, there would be a tint of blue on your gear. We also have more polygons for cool. fingers and toes as well now, end quote. Which is really cool. It shows you that they're listening to what so people want and trying to future proof. Looks amazing, right? Now we change zone to Il Meg, which is obviously in Shadowbringers. The Ooh. textures on the floor, the stones. I don't want to play right now. Look at that. <laughs> Everything here is so vastly different to my eyes. The lush pink fields are now way more vibrant and detailed. And that comparison is frankly ridiculous. Look at that. The detail per flower. <laughs> It's just so much higher, per petal even, as you walk through the Now it bothers me. Move, much like the, the left, it didn't used to bother me. Now it will. Now this 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 has made it impossible for me to go back and do these uh these delivery quests for for crafting or whatever. It's like how do I how do I go there now? <laughs> the grass, so little petals are flying off as well as Yoshi P jumps up and down in them and pushes forward through them. It just feels so much more immersive. I want to walk through that myself compared to the left side, which is just so- It has spoiled! And you can see the floor much easier. Everything! So I think it's uh, definitely the density of these areas is going to look very impressive, especially since we're seeing jungles in Dawn. Yeah, Dark Phoenix, I think you're right. Knowing the team, they are going to push the these graphical updates in front of people's eyes and are definitely gonna take them places where they didn't think they would be going just so that they can see what else is updated they've spent too much time to not do some sort of like in internal marketing when it comes to this stuff trail so the fog off of the lake is another demonstration of other environmental effects they can now use to add some mystic i keep like really wanting to move the cursor <laughs> that i see popping up from time to time but like it's in their screen and their screen is in another person's video that i'm watching so i have no control over this cursor whatsoever but it still bothers me <laughs> to zoom in you know some backdrop and depth to zones which looks really cool so you can imagine what they can do with creepy places so now we're just going to show only the 7.0 stuff. Uh, so they talk about anti-aliasing and Yoshi P says the closer that you look at an object, the more pixelated it will seem. But with the rendering methods that they have, it will be shown smoothly. Maybe you can notice how the leaves of a tree in the background are shaking a little, he says. So as you can see, the, the, it's shaking a little bit. The smaller an object like a leaf, the more noticeable the shaking will be. Mm. They now have two rendering methods in the game showing T-S-C-M-A-A, -A, which isn't that noticeable on the footage on what from what I could see, you know, especially through compression on YouTube, etc. But you do actually notice on T-S-C-M-A-A -A, uh, -A -A mode, rather, there is less jumping around of those textures. There's also a T-S-C-M-A-A -A mode, but as the- I don't know what those mean! As well, if you <laughs> wanted that, but I think it looks terrible in comparison after seeing night and day comparisons. This looks like they have a much better anti-aliasing package bringing to 14. And um, yeah, it, it's looks... so much better than FX AA, in my opinion. It's probably going to be more noticeable. It's a little blurry when like when you walk. In the game. And hopefully the benchmark. Is that the this... comparisons of that as well. Next, talking about shadows, which is a big thing in MMO. Yeah, whatever it looks best, right? <laughs> these days. The first option is the soft shadow option. As you can see. On the trees, shadow quality is improved and more detailed on the floor, so you can see Look the outlines. That. The parameters for soft shadows mean that the higher up you go, the softer they actually start to look, mm. as you can see here. The closer an object is, and the shadow is... Well, that's realistic. Rise, the more firm and... <laughs> that's know, what shadows look like. Are. The leaves are obviously further away, so they naturally blur out a little bit more, which is closer to how real life would go, so that's the new feature. This is a setting, and you can turn this off if you wanted it to just be permanently detailed. But as you can see, even far away, being that defined, it kind of loses that sort of middle ground. Yeah, it looks like the the tree is like if this is the floor, like if this is if if this is like the well, yeah, like the floor. Basically, it looks like the tree is like this. <laughs> 
So having that sort of variable setting, having the soft shadows on, adds a lot more depth, I think, at least to my yeah. eyes. But it's an option you can turn on and off. This is only something you can change on Windows and Mac, however, with PS5 uh, having the highest setting enabled by default. So bear mm -hmm. that in mind, you'll have the soft shadows permanently. So system config, uh, cool. graphic settings, and depending on the platform you play, the settings and options may vary, obviously. This applies to every shadow you're seeing in the entire game, he says. So that's pretty awesome. So if right. it's a shadow of your character or a boss or a plimp or an etherite, they'll all be affected. PC, yeah. So now limited to a few places in the game, they say there are some new water effects. This demonstrates a new tech they're employing, allowing the team to better display waves and water physics. Wow. Where is this, you ask? If I turn the camera a bit, the scenario team will be very mad at me, he laughs. <laughs> this is somewhere in Solution 9, presumably, as you can kind of guess. But uh, yeah, that, that looks like very choppy, stormy. Stormy Seas. I like the lightning bolts as well, flashing in the background. That looks really cool. Next, we have a shot of Camp Drybone over in Fanalan in the starting area, uh, showing the NPCs that have been updated here and yes. the landscape. So, you know. Okay. Does this mean that in this NPC overhaul, does this mean that please, for the love of God, will Roban? get a new robe if roban with this graphics overhaul does not in fact get a new robe i will i don't know i will lose it that is the first thing that is the first thing that i'm gonna go back and look to make sure that they've changed roban's blanket robe thing it is in sore need. <laughs> you know, some NPCs do get backdated, including these. You'll notice the eyes are actually moving, right. Yoshi P says. This might influence cutscenes and how characters show emotions, so it's actually turned off during those. Same goes for G-Pose. This is just a little detail we like, so good. Uh, like to add, and it only happens during your normal gameplay. Do we need it? Probably not. Did we want it? Most definitely, he laughs, end quote. So all of the little details go towards enriching the bigger picture of the world and, you know, that world building, the story building. So apparently it's so good. very hard to bring more of that world alive with little bits like this, as you can clearly see. And I really like the fact that NPCs can blink and their pupils can move. Right. Something I, I don't want to go back from, honestly, after seeing it. So next, um, Yoshi P wants to show Chulialal. So this is actually the main city in Dawn Trail. This is what it actually looks like and where the expansion presumably begins. And the Yoshi P turns off repeatedly in this footage, uh, as you can see, trying not to spoil too much. I think, <laughs> honestly, they showed too much here, but they, they just wanted to show as much as possible. They're very proud of what they've, you know, actually uh, They should here. be. It's a lot gorgeous. Of went into this. So, and you can really tell, can't you? It's very magical. They also uh, toggle nighttime as well. So you see oh. all those lanterns turn on. Oh, that's stuff. pretty. Absolutely magical. And then there's a view from the top of the city where Yoshi P says, and I quote, a place you can get to if you try really hard, end quote. So and knowing them, they're going to put that vista like right where he's standing so that it takes you freaking years and and solving puzzle mechanics to get there <laughs> it's so beautiful though right another jumping puzzle right <laughs> oh yes this is kagane tower 2 so jumping puzzles do return if you're a fan of those i personally cannot wait for there to be an obscure sightseeing location on another lamp post to land on that's going to be fun yoshibi says the tower over there also looks like you can climb it end quote so Expect lots of jumping puzzles in various areas, including the cities. <laughs> Great. Which is going to be exciting. And now a close-up of fruit. <laughs> oh, dear. I look at the detail on all of these objects. Obviously, hey, I the mean... Small like, clutter objects have been changed and upgraded. Uh, he says, no more low-poly grapes, end quote. And laughs. Uh, the textures on the barrels, the rope there, the sacks, the textures there. The store right black. There as well. <laughs> oh, my God. What makes you say that? And of course, the grapes are no longer just... You know, low poly. So I missed that. There, if you're expecting low poly 
grapes in too yellow, or you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> Another graphical option is graphical upscaling. As you can see, there is FSR and NVIDIA DLSS as well. Yoshi P says, quote, we're using some uh, super techniques to increase performance while we're enhancing the graphics, end quote. And then I move to slides to explain this. So super resolution will be implemented on every platform. Oh, I'm the, oh the jumpy puzzle. Oh, low res See, I thought you were referring to the to the fruit, like when he was uh, when he was showing that. It's like, what is it about fruit that uh, that happened in Strong Blood? Like, what's the what's the fruit and vegetable drama there? <laughs> therefore minimizing resolution degradation so it's actually fsr 1.0 oof and nvidia dlss 2.0 which isn't too bad fsr will be enabled by default and those playing on windows with a graphics card that supports dlss 2.0 they recommend changing the resolution settings to that uh, when you can this has resolution scaling and also enables dynamic resolution when you use these features which is pretty cool Right. And obviously, lots of games have this now, and people complain when it's not in games. So there you go. <laughs> Yoshi P says, so "Of course, they would." A machine that supports this and want consistent FPS, I recommend keeping this setting on. End quote. For the PS4 and Xbox Series S, both are included in the graphical update, though they do say certain features may not be applicable. To reduce stress on the PS4, super sampling will be reduced, while dynamic resolution and LOD, which is the low detail models on distant objects, will be force enabled. For X I love my Final Fantasy XIV community to death, but damn it, we are the most complainy nitpicky people that i have ever met when it comes to when it comes to this we are so spoiled like we have the dev team that made our npcs blink and had their eyes move so that we could feel more immersed while questing we are so spoiled we don't even see it <laughs> xbox for series s uh, to reduce stress the lod for shadows will be forcibly enabled there are also some settings you cannot No, we don't deserve it. <laughs> but these are the main things they wanted to highlight. Um, and obviously, these will be on all platforms as well. So, uh, yeah, bear in mind, that's not all of the changes, but the, these are the main ones that people wanted to know about. Yoshi P says, as previously mentioned, everything we're introducing newly in 7.0 will already have these changes applied. But we didn't get to everything that we have in the game right now. We started with main things like job specific gear. The 6.0 job gear will get mm -hmm. updated graphically in 7.1, except for the paladin gear, because we <gasps> use that model. Excuse me? <laughs> I'm a paladin maid! What do you mean? <laughs> what kind of discrimination is this? <laughs> Like this is man, this is just my luck. This is just my luck. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna play this again to just make sure I understood this correctly. What the fuck? Like job specific gear. The 6.0 job gear will get updated graphically in 7.1, except for the paladin gear, because we use that model data for a lot of testing. As a result, the paladin gear is already updated, and oh. you can expect that to be in the game. Everyone, this is this is this is what happens when I don't listen to the sentence until the very end. The paladin actually gets the updates first. I apologize. What a great day! What a great day to be a paladin. <laughs> this is my overreaction to not even letting you say. One else gets updated. Sorry. One. For the 6.0 job gear just to reiterate what that is so moving on to a big segment about blacklisting <laughs> and uh, basically avoiding the nefarious side of final fantasy 40 yes and with it. so the 7.0 blacklist improvements yoshi p says i don't really like to have too many rules myself an example would be supported game paths i think players should have a freedom to choose their own environment he says end quote so the new improvements include enhanced blacklist functionality there's now a mute list, a term filter, an estate expulsion feature, an enhanced <laughs> lodestone privacy setting. Perfect. So what does all that mean? So as you can see with a blacklist feature... Can you tell how many people have you blacklisted? I, I, I don't know, like... I'm fucking lovable, who would blacklist me? <laughs> what do you mean? 
You can now blacklist characters' messages, but also their character model will also be hidden. I don't go around you bullying people! It's tied to the entire service account of that character you have blacklisted. Oh, wow. Black, uh, blacklisted players do display in certain situations where visibility is necessary, such as when party together in a duty, however. Oh, you, you can be! When character model is visible, their name is displayed as simply unknown. Furthermore, a notification will indicate. So, what happens if you if you need to communicate something from the party? Notification will indicate when they speak during duties, and players may like to temporarily see what they're written by the subsequent. Oh, okay. Hate when they try to speak during duties, and it will be hidden. And players may elect to temporarily see what they have written in the chat by using a sub command. Temporarily. Text. Default, it will be hidden if ever. It's like we have a common goal now for the next eight and a half minutes of this expert roulette. I will listen to what you have to say. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Listed. The mute list hides a muted character's chat messages and this is applied to all- But I wonder if they see you. Like, will they see you? Will they in any way, shape or form know that you've had them blacklisted how does that work characters on the muted character service account as well their known names will show as normal but when you're in a party or the same alliance during duties a notification also pops up to indicate that they've spoken and you can use the sub command to see what they said if you so wish to so if somebody's saying something naughty mm -hmm. that they shouldn't you can see it if you wish to or you could leave it blank Characters blacklist at any time prior to 7.0 will be carried forward. It's I've never blacklisted anyone. 200 characters can be registered. <laughs> I've never used it. <laughs> and data is stored on the server side. This applies across all platforms. But as character names are served, uh, saved on the client side, their names will only display when playing on the device they were registered. Like, no one's ever upset me that much. Draw 200 <laughs> characters. I'm and hard to upset. not shared with a blacklist, so you can mute people and not blacklist them if you prefer. And obviously that might be an option many people go for. Like, for I just can't be bothered. This data is stored client-side for the mute list. Characters will only be muted on the device they were initially registered on. That's the other key point. The term filter will filter out messages containing specified terms that you don't want. For example, you might see people gill selling. You could actually censor out that word and it would automatically mm. block that. This applies to say, tell yell shout and emotes cool. in all circumstances in the entire game but if someone isn't this counterproductive like when it comes to what they're trying to do uh with this like what happens if um what happens if there is indeed like gold selling or whatever uh, practices and you mute them wouldn't that decrease the amount of people being able to report them or do you just not care about remove excuse me removing these accounts anymore so they're just like okay if enough people just don't hear them that means that they will stop doing it because this uh because uh because nobody listens to them or how is that gonna work Same. it does actually not apply to link shells crossword link shells party chat or free company chat though so but just you know say tell yell shout and emotes so if you're fed up of somebody you know spamming some recruitment message or something like that you can filter terms which is really cool it's a shame that wasn't in years ago honestly <laughs> the ex estate expulsion feature allows you to make a list of no entry uh, so a list of you're not allowed in whilst within your estate grounds to be expelled immediately characters added to this no entry list will be unable to enter your estate for 10 days that's not enough this applies to all characters on the expelled characters why not character forever account. so if you expel one person and they make a, another character it's still on the same account so they get turned away and teleported out free company masters and estate owners have access to this feature masters or estate owners can designate up to four free company members or housemates that you've shared your estate with to have access to this function and when players with the expulsion privileges are in the estate, anyone registered to their blacklist will be automatically expelled when attempting to enter the estate grounds, which is a really, really nice feature. Right. I like that. In terms of the lodestone privacy settings, these then allow for greater control over what people can see on your lodestone. You can limit who can view certain aspects of your lodestone character page, such as your profile, 
your achievements and your friends that's list. good visibility settings can be limited to your friends free company members link shell members much more you can also remove yourself from lodestone character searches if you don't want to be searchable by other people there is also a block list added to the lodestone itself notifications regarding the activity and blog entries of block players will no longer display what's block blog entry of block players activity and what is a blog entry of a player i don't get it the above settings will also apply to characters added to your in-game blacklist so it is pretty awesome how it sort of updates on the lodestone as well that's really cool so now we've got through the sort of sad side of things but needed honestly and very cool that they're doing that yeah event stuff we've got yokai watch yokai watch returns with a new oh kit i haven't done that elements from yokai watch and it's a sort of obviously design of the plate design yoshi p says since we added portraits after our see i've never used that i wasn't aware that as a final fantasy 14 player you have a blog like what <laughs> last uh, yokai watch collab we asked if we can add some for the next and we got the okay so here's a new portrait and quote that's cute this event starts on wednesday the 24th of april and runs up to the 25th of may i believe so okay. that's pretty exciting if you want to take part in a yokai watch event we don't know any other details yet probably there'll be a lodestone post with some more details we don't know if we're adding new weapons or anything for the other jobs no idea, but we do know there's a portrait section, so that's cool. Yeah. There's also a second Cute. Moogle treasure trove event starting on the 14th of May until oh, the nice. 24th of June. Um, so that's something to be looking forward to, presumably with new Make rewards and the new Tombstone of Genesis. The media tour for Dawn Trail for content creators, influencers, and media starts on the 15th of May. Is there any information on the media tour whatsoever for anyone who's been... I guess watching this uh, broadcast, who's been following this, when do they normally like announce anything about Media Tour? Uh, this actually tours around the world, ending on the 30th of May. They're visiting Los Angeles in North America, as well as Berlin in Germany. So that's exciting. Wait, for what? Who is North America? They tours around the world and me. Looking forward to presumably with new rewards and a new Tombstone of Genesis. The media tour for Dawn Trail for content creators, influencers, and media starts on the 15th of May. Uh, this actually tours around the world, ending on the 30th of May. They're visiting Los Angeles in North America, as well as Berlin in Germany. So that's exciting for anybody who is attending that. And hopefully we get some really cool news out of that and footage and things. Wait, does that mean that the media tour that that the media tour wouldn't be online like it was for for endwalker that means that okay it makes sense because when when there was endwalker there was covid also so there were travel restrictions but before that i wasn't i wasn't there how did it work before that did it did uh did you actually get to travel to media tour for let's say for Shadowbringers, because I was I was a player during Shadowbringers, but not before that, so I wasn't there in Stormblood to see what the Shadowbringers media tour was. And how do they? Okay, how do they do that? Do they like fly people in, or do you just do you have to like make your way there? Have to travel? I think oh, that would be so exciting. Like I don't know. Like I can only hope. I've been working on my. Final Fantasy fourteen channel for like, I don't know, two years, and I'm going to be a little heartbroken if, like, I don't have a massive channel, but my channel is like, what, between like 8 and 9k subs, and I had almost like 2k when there was, um, when there was the Endwalker Media Tour, so I was uh, a little bit more than a nobody <laughs> in that world, and I'd like to think that I've done enough to at least, at the very least, be considered, but, uh, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I, I would love to. I would love to. It would be a great honor. But I'm not going to get my hopes up because if, if it's travel, that means that it's even more exclusive than just, you know, the, the online media tour that I thought they were going to be doing. So, you know. Hopefully some cool people get invited. I can't wait to see who and uh, cheer them along. There will be a return of the Dragon Quest 10 crossover event in the game 
on the 5th of June until the 20th of June. So if you want to do the Dragon Quest if you want to do the Dragon Quest 10 crossover, sorry, it's early. Um, I've been up a while. Then, uh, then you can definitely do that, especially if you're an Xbox player and you want the wobbly hat, the Jello hat. Definitely, uh, go and do that. Definitely. Hi, Necroform. Welcome fun. back. What's up? Some puff puff whilst you're there. And that out of context sounds very bad. You will know what I mean when you do the quest. If you've never played Dragon Quest, that'll be even more out of context. Have it's fun very funny. There are two scheduled live letters in the future, one for the 16th of May and one for the 14th of June. The 81st. So the 16th one, this is going to be during the media tour? Okay. Uh, letter, from a pro uh, letter from a producer live will focus on jobs. Maybe with a job trailer, mm. Yoshi P says. Maybe nice. not. Maybe. Who knows? On the 16th. So uh, there you go. Yeah. We're, we're going to be seeing a job trailer. That's going to be exciting. People are going to be picking apart the benchmark trailer and looking at all of the job actions and trying to figure out what they are. Right. So uh, I can't wait to see who's right about what they guess. And uh, I can't wait to see a job trailer, honestly. There's going to be 48 hour maintenance for Dawn Trail because it's enormous. And then early access for Dawn Trail starts on the 28th of June. And uh, with that being said, the next segment is actually a realm resplendent with Warriors of Light. This is just player stats and information, uh, basically, to wrap up. Trying to sleep. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> Wait, what time is it there? There are over 30 million players worldwide now. Uh, Final Fantasy XIV has 240 accolades received worldwide, with 313 nominations. 88 Bang. etherites were reached in development, so that's how many are in the game. Uh, compared to 2.0 when they had 27. Oh, 12 p.m. Have you slept? Does not include 7.0s at all. And the 88 as well. So 88 etherites, that's a lot. There are 325 duties available in the duty finder. This doesn't include PvP, gold source of stuff, or content like Eureka. That's a lot of content. Right. There are 159 hours of cutscenes. This also includes <laughs> side quests shit. as well. There are over 4,917 minutes of music in the game. Wow. Holy moly, with over 1,583 songs. Mazuyoshi so Oh, third shift, I God, see. Really oh. That's a lot of music, I didn't realize. There are yeah, I had to switch away from my third shift because my body just couldn't handle it anymore. So now I'm trying to adjust to not uh, staying up during the entire night, but I'm finding it hard to because now I'm used to it. 16,096 tons if the weight of one material was, was wow. or something. <laughs> um, a materia melded in the past year is equal to the total pl platinum reserves in the earth. Some of these stats are getting a bit far. -fetched. That's crazy. 4,152 <laughs> kilometers is the number of corks fired in, in terms of distance <laughs> from bottles of Realm Reborn Red. <laughs> Told you these are getting ridiculous. Right. Four million three hundred and fifty. Thanks, I appreciate that. My hair only looks good today because my um my son's birthday party was today. So it's it's that one day when it doesn't look like shit and the rest of them is just gonna go back. Yeah, I just dyed it. Uh actually I bleached it and normally they leave it bleached, but now I'm starting to realize that it is more yellow than what I'd like it to be. So I think that next time I bleach it, I'm also just going to dye it like like almost like silver white not not gray like i don't know sephiroth but uh i don't know like khaleesi white <laughs> Fifty thousand six hundred and fifty-six liters is apparently uh, the amount of concoctions imbibed so like <laughs> potions and things which is nearly more than the annual consumption of ketchup in the U.S., they say. That's insane. Where are they getting these numbers? I don't know. hilarious. <laughs> Here's some stats then on um, when people who are... I like how they're, uh, they're like, very subtly, like, trashing the states for their food habits. <laughs> it's, it's like, this is how much processed foods you, you eat. <laughs> Apparently, filling out a survey, I don't remember a survey. This might be Japan only. When they started playing the game... Uh, we've got favorite amounts of players. Apparently, the top one is the company Chocobo. That's based. Wait, where's the one point oh? And then the SDS Fen. Apparently, the top one is the company. It's Realm Reborn and Walker Shadowbring was Heaven's Word and Stormblood, but nobody played the game during the one point oh. Chocobo. That's based off stats, <laughs> I presume. And then the SDS Fenrir and then the Fatter Cat. 
That's mostly because of convenience and when you get those mounts, presumably. <laughs> and then favorite minions, apparently the Starbird, then Fat Cat, and then Lesser Power. Aww. That's interesting. Favorite home points are Limsa Lamenta, unsurprisingly. <laughs> Gridania and then old Charlian. Most formidable foe, although I'm not sure what stat this is behind, is apparently Hades, Ensinger, and then Warrior of Light, which is, is an interesting one. Right. Then we have uh, what Final Fantasy XIV means to you. So some word associations. First, the Japanese one, and then the English one. Personally, there are words on there, uh, but words aren't that aren't on there that should be. Um, much meat what <laughs> yeah it was uh today was a very very long day and i'm ready to just be very low energy today and not do much because i've seen too many people i have i've shaken too many of the parents hands i've i've talked too much i've seen too many kids i've heard too much music and now i've turned off all the lights and i just need to like not not see people anymore today it was it was fun it was very fun but also very difficult for me time and announcements then there's not too much uh first they showed this really really interesting bahamut and meteon plate uh they say this big one in the background isn't for sale which is really sad i'm not sure why they showed that then because i want to buy the big one the little <laughs> ones are cute i guess not my cup of tea but uh, apparently those are of merch you can buy there's a custom order photo book, Memories of Light, which is Japan only, where you get oh, print wow. your own screenshots and a little book book of memories. That's, That's so cute. cute. Although it is Japan only. Wave two of the potato chips with the Final Fantasy XIV. <laughs> oh, 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 God. K Kikea. Wow. Kakea is going ahead, the chip company, with the deliciously hot flavor floor tank consome. Oh, in Japan, right? Yes. I don't know what that flavor is. Whatever. Wave two of the Hydlin and Zodiac figure is available if you want to go and pre order that your sexy emote with a free statue that's available on all of the region store pages i believe the shipping for that is october now for wave two listed on screen if you want to get that a planetarium show in japan only featuring the tale of eorzea's divine and celestial there's some details on there if you're lucky enough to go to that and final fantasy 16 rising tide dlc releases on the 18th of this in month five days Definitely worth checking out if you want more who's final excited fantasy 16 in balasphere like i do that game is amazing. Go play it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, they're hiring I a marketing it. planner and community planner in Japan for the Square Enix oh. team. <laughs> the QR codes are on screen. So if you're lucky enough to be living in Japan and you want to apply for a position at Square Enix, there you go. Good luck. Don't don't forget where you heard about this if you get chosen <laughs> and you saw it on a video. Bye. Bye. Um, so yeah, that was the letter from a producer live part 80. Quite a lengthy one. As you can probably imagine, there was a lot of talking. A lot of discussion about technical terms and a lot of information about the blacklist features and protecting players it's really interesting to see how much um square enix are doing to provide a better play experience for everyone especially now we have more players worldwide on more platforms than ever that was crazy anyway, that was so much information for, Trail. for me my personal picks were certainly the graphical updates features and uh, seeing it in the game that was mind-blowing to me it's much better than seeing it in a picture, isn't it, side by side? So, anyway, much love. Enjoy the rest of your day. More videos on the way from the benchmark and many other things, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. If you're not subscribed to Mayoni yet, please make sure to do so. I am. I promise you I am on my other channel. I don't subscribe to anyone on this one because I only use this one for my non final fantasy 14 content but i promise you i'm subscribed uh do make sure to go and and do that because these videos are freaking amazing and is it uh i am i promise you i'm subscribed i just don't sub to anyone here um what i'm uh what i'm mostly excited about is yes the graphical updates but I'm I'm just very, very simple to please. I'm just, when it comes to Dawn Trail, regardless of the updates, I'm excited for the new story, okay? Like, that's just me. Like, I'm just excited for, like, you know, new zones, new story, and just, you know, new things to, to do. And as a content creator, is it, uh, 
is it like fully rotten to say that I am excited to see what they are going to do about the media tour and who they're going to be inviting? Like there's a fraction of me that's at least hoping to be considered, but I don't want to get my hopes up. I have been working very, very hard on my Final Fantasy XIV uh, content, even during like the fourteen lull. And I would like to believe that there's a... Uh, a, a, a tiny chance that at least I get taken a look at. And even if they're like, no, we're not going to invite her this year, at least I want to be taken a look at, you know? <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, but yeah, uh, leave the video a like, make sure to subscribe and whatnot. It was, uh, it was a very good one.